Okay, so what do we want to touch on um, uh, for the remainder of the day? We're sitting at around about five to three, so or 10 to three, is um, I want to touch on video marketing and uh, I want to give you a few secrets and tips with regards to video marketing. Um, can I just ask who at the moment um, has got video on their websites? Who's got video on the website? If we can have security just to perhaps come in and, I don't know, shoot those people who are talking, uh, yeah, something like that, yeah. Uh, Julie, could you get a gun? Thank you. So, um, uh, oh, Gary, quiet, no, I, think, I think Gary signed up to the program, so let him live, but whoever's talking oh, down the back to them, so I didn't sign up, just shoot them, okay? I wouldn't do that to you. It's all going. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, right, oh, I, I might as well, who gives a shit, I'll give up. I'm not. Can everyone please sit down? Wow, you've got authority. You've got authority. Now. Yeah, okay, okay. Right, so let's just start that again whilst we've got at least a mild degree of uh, attention. Um, now, remember, everybody, you don't need a bed. The last thing in your life you need is a bed. I didn't pick it up there. The guy that owns the bed business is leaving. I just thought, yeah, he didn't even pick it up. That was a waste of sarcasm. Uh, yeah. um, okay, so therefore, let me, uh, let me just ask you again, who at the moment has had a shot at producing uh, videos for their website? Okay, of course, most of you, okay? And put your hand up if you think that whilst you've had a shot at it, it probably hasn't turned out as good as you would have liked it to have been. Yeah, okay, right. On. Um, and I think um, the reason that that happens is because, uh, again, you didn't jump into what Emil was saying there before and put yourself in the shoes of the viewer, okay? And, uh, uh, and so, therefore, you've been shouting at them, not literally, but you've been shouting at them, but what you haven't been doing is going in with the structure and considering what their challenges and problems are and how you're going to you know, get the solution. And, and, and Bill, if you don't mind, I might get you to pop in. Yeah, thanks, mate. Um, okay, so therefore, in uh, my manifesto book, which is, uh, this is the mini version of it here in front of Michael. So therefore, this thing here, um, we have that you know, as part of our online stuff. And in chapter eight in that, it's all about video testimonials. It's all about video, I think mm. it's chapter eight. Uh, all about video testimonials and when you go through that we actually have the questions you should ask in there but essentially the thing that you want from someone is what was life like before they met you or bought your product and what's life like now okay so did you notice when Ian came up and kindly did, did the testimonial which will cost me a carton of beer but anyway um, when he came up and did that earlier in St George Colours um, he said what life was like before he met JD and then what life was like afterwards before he met me, he was just doing car dealerships. He hadn't thought about anything else. And then when he came into this environment, now 70% of his business is something else. And uh, I find that probably for about half the businesses that come into this environment, the, um, uh, we widen their funnel for them. We, we do, we widen the funnel for them. And so therefore, uh, the Greater Building Society was exactly the same. The Greater Building Society uh, was uh, marketing to the 4% of people who woke up this morning who are looking for a home loan. There's less than 4% of people that wake up today looking for anything, beds, home loan, refrigerator, whatever it might be. And so you want to widen that funnel. So what I did is I mentioned this yesterday, but I'll repeat it because it's worth it. I went to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, and you should do that, the ABS, and it'll give you stats on anything. And the reason I did that TV show, Dreams Can Come True, about real people, was that, guess what, there was an Australian Bureau of Statistics stat that said that 62% of Australians preferred to watch programs on TV about real people. That shouldn't be surprising. Birch Backyard, uh, Backyard Makeover, the Kardashians, and so on and so forth, Ozzy Osbourne. So it shouldn't have been a surprise, but when I went into Channel 10 to pitch that show, uh, um, I said to them, did you know that 62% of people uh, wanted to watch shows about people? Even the programmer, Danny Mackay, his name was, for Channel didn't know that. Now, by the way, the thing I didn't know is what to charge for a TV program, because they said to me at the time, um, wow, this is great, they were crying. We played the Mel Meninga one. I did a lot of stuff with Mel, so I said, would you do me a favour and do that one? And that one that you saw was a little boy who was, you know, 14 years of age, and uh, his dream was to, you know, meet Mel Meninga. And as it turned out, uh, his father uh, had not been a good guy and left his mum and him uh, to live in the caravan in uh, Coffs Harbour. And life wasn't too good for them, so therefore Mel Meninga surprised him at school with not only, you know, getting him out in front of the classroom, but then the next day took him to New Zealand to a football match on a jumbo jet. So it was quite incredible. And, uh, and as it turned out, Mal did that. We produced it and took it into Channel 10 when I'm pitching. Even the men in the room were crying. And they said, what do you want for this TV show? Well, this idiot had not thought about that, had he? Um, I had just promised to get upstairs that I'd pay back. We got out of jail. So therefore, I just went, oh, 142. There was a girl with me called Linda. And uh, I said, uh, she thought, well, what are you going to pull out of your ass here? I went, 100 and, 
$142,700. He goes, well, for one program, right? Yeah. He goes, well, we get 90210 and The Simpsons for 25 grand. And I was tempted to go, well, 25 grand then. <laughs> so, uh, and I did, and they held my ground. Now, they booked half a dozen episodes of this thing, and as I told you, got nominated for Loki and all that sort of stuff, so we did all right. But, um, but as it turned out, uh, the show cost, uh, we, we got 142 a show from Channel 10. The show cost me 175 a show, but I wasn't doing it for the money. I was doing it to say thanks to the guy upstairs because we got out of jail. So I didn't do that one for the money, but when we got the series up, which was the Woman's Day version where we we're going to be on every week, uh, obviously that was a money-making exercise. I was making quite a bit of money and that it had it came off. So the thing is, is that what you want to do is that you want to look at the, what was life like before him and the lady who, for example, has the landscaper. Uh, doing the lawn every week and uh, he mows the lawn and uh, he does the edges and uh, maybe cleans the pool or cleans the windows before he goes. She would look down the barrel of the camera and say, hello, my name's Beryl. I just want to say that when you know Tom came along and my lawns were just disgusting. They were just awful. There was weeds everywhere. And the guy that used to come, he didn't have one of those whapper snapper. No, it's whipper snapper. He didn't have whatever it was, whapper snapper, snip, 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 but he didn't have it. And my edges of the lawns were bad. And I just felt bad about that. And um, and life wasn't real good. The, my house didn't look good. And then Tom came along. Tom mows the lawns brilliantly. He's fantastic. He's got the whipper snapper and he actually cleans the pool uh, in a little pair of um, sort of swimmers. And, um, and he cleans my windows my bedroom windows and um and and tom's you know fathered two of my children he's he's, uh, he's much better than the other guy he's no good so therefore life before tom and after tom and that's what you want 20 cents worth no i thought you did quite well there yeah that's okay. all right yeah pat on the back um and so therefore what you want to do also the cardinal sin that most people do with videos is that they record them on tiles you can't record anything on tiles or lino, uh, and preferably not concrete. This is where you do it, on carpet, okay? Mm -hmm. So whenever you're doing anything, and even if you guys are shooting the kitchen stuff, put big rugs from Rugs A Million or whatever it is on the, on the ground, because it'll suck up a lot of the echo. You don't want to sound like you're in the toilet, all right? So therefore, there's an accountant here at Varsity Lakes, lovely guy, uh, but he joined this program and he got all excited. Really you know, good looking, sort of George Clooney sort of character. So. Uh, it was perfect for being the spokesperson for their business. Um, and he sent off the videos to me after he'd read chapter eight or whatever it is in that thing. And I said, what do you think of them? I said, mate, terrific, but you can't use one of them. Yeah. Uh, it's like the performance was great. It was mm -hmm. terrific, but you couldn't use them because the echo from the tiles on his floor, he did them at the reception area of his accountancy practice and the echo just killed everything. So I'd never, ever, ever do any videos on um, uh, tiles or, or wood um, or lino and preferably not concrete, that's not so bad, but certainly try and just do carpet. If you don't have carpet where you're going to do them, just go to the, one of those big rug shops and get one of the $200 carpet rugs and put them down, okay? Uh, and the other thing is, is that if you are ugly, then try not to do the videos because um, people just don't react to ugly people. Uh, unless maybe you're doing like ugly cream or something that's going to fix the thing. So try and get someone who's at least mildly good looking to do the videos. Um, Emil, do you do your own videos or? Funny you should mention that. <laughs> I don't do talking ed ones. I do a lot of voice work. Yeah, well, do a lot of <laughs> face, for, face for radio. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that, look, the thing is, is that uh, um, if, and, and I'm only joking about the ugly thing, but the thing is, is that if you don't feel comfy in front of the camera, that's going to come across, okay? And, you know, how many of us see from time to time these poor oh, forgotten souls that are on Facebook and they just shouldn't be because, you know, they're on there, oh, hello, you know, my name's you know, Harry, whatever it is, and I do this, that, and they go, oh, mate, you've just got to just go away, get someone else to do your video for you. So if you're not comfy in front of the camera, or you can't talk underwater like we can, then you may even decide not to have a presenter. You may decide just to have a voiceover. Mm -hmm. So if you're in our Rolodex list, then you can go in there and you look at a voiceover company in there that will do, called Hardy Audio, uh, and they will do your voiceovers with really professional uh, radio voices for something like $90 or $80 or something like that for a minute or a minute and a half voiceover. That's what you want to do. Okay. Just on the uh, talking head, I jest, I have done plenty of um, talking head videos where it's me, you know, talking some crap in front of a camera and their camera's on you. If you're going to do something like that, make sure you rehearse and practice a lot and do a dozen takes and analyze each take and work out what you're doing with your face especially if you're not a trained actor then you need to go through a lot and learn how to do that stuff 
Um, and also don't do those selfie ones. They, they just piss everyone off where, where it's like someone, and, and it's like they're just turning on their phone and it's like, oh, look how bloody authentic I am. Oh, look, this is, you, oh, look, you've just caught me at a, at a slightly inconvenient moment. But, you know, since I've got your attention, I might just tell you about some, some new bullshit product or something, you know, or some new, some new little brainwave that I've had. Those are extremely tedious. Extremely Gail, can, tedious. You, can you bring on the Brisbane plumber um, <laughs> uh, testimonial, if we can find that from somewhere? I just want to show the guys what not to do. We have a, uh, a testimonial, uh, sorry, a, a video, and it's exactly what Emil just said. That we grabbed, uh, it wasn't our program, but I just saw it somewhere and I thought this is classic. And it was a Brisbane plumber inviting you on a Facebook ad to contact him and go to his website. Talk about ugly, this guy was the ugliest guy I've ever seen. So he shouldn't have been in front of the camera, he should not. He'd been beaten up by the ugly stick really bad. And, um, and uh, it was sort of like, it had to be dropped when he was a baby. <laughs> And uh, like from 36 <laughs> floors. To, and um, how, how much deeper can I go? He was ugly. Uh, and he comes on, and he's not only ugly, but he's so boring. He just came in, hi, oh, my name's Jim, and if you've got you know, any toilet problems, I'm your man. It was just disgusting. And uh, the reason I've been, I think, if they can find it, is because it's hilarious, but it's exactly what you not you should not do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, tell me this who in, uh, has done uh, videos and have used them on your website or Facebook ads, but you've got a pretty good result? And I, I just want to know what you saw, Dave. Okay, good. And what was yours, Dave? Um, I put up my first video. Can we can we get a microphone for Dave? Um, we don't have any staff anymore. I don't know where they went. Maybe they've decided that. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I got. <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> it could be on it's a really good. It's a really good thing. We just shoot programs for horror content. Not Brendan. Brendan, I want to say something to you. Is that, you know, some Hang people, on, it's my turn. Yeah, but, 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 but some, Brendan, some people, some people, sarcasm works for them. Other people, other people, you're just a nice person. So I just say nice. Yeah. Dave? So, yeah, my first video, I just used one of the little doodle animations. Mm -hmm. And I put that up for, we had it on yeah, some Google ads and Facebook ads. We, did, we were $100 short of 50 grand in orders over about wow. seven weeks. Wow. And the last one we've put up, it was, I had to do it myself, but it was um, it's a, a, just a 90 second job and that's been on Facebook and LinkedIn. Just you post. That you've actually been involved with a lot of 90 second jobs, is that right? Or? Yeah. Did you tell him, Gail? <laughs> So, sorry. Because I've always wondered when my kids have met, uh, they did always call him Uncle Dad. So I, I know that's right. Sorry. Yeah, and yeah, wow. so that hasn't, I haven't got any paid traffic to that, but we've had three or four really good leads and a couple of sales. Wow. So let me get this straight. So there's the fast drawing, the animation, the digital animation. Yeah. And where, did you do the voiceover for that or? No, I've got a mate who's a voiceover artist and he did the voiceover. Okay, so then when did you do the live video with you or no, recorded with you? When did you do that? Oh, I'm not in it. You said, oh, you said you no said ugly you, people. I thought you said you did another one. Okay. No, I, no seriously, I thought you said you did another one on top of that. But you didn't. Yeah, I did another one, but that was all okay. Shutterstock and okay. the same right. voiceover guy. And yeah. uh, just so that we don't give all credit to the Doodle video because we have to give a lot of credit to that. You can get them done. It's in our Rolodex, by the way, the guy mm. in the Philippines that does it for us, and he's 250 US per 60 seconds. So therefore, that's incredible. I used to pay like five, six grand for these damn things, and now they're down to here. But uh, what was the script in the Doodle video? What, where did it go? Did it go shit to gold? Um, we, we had a script writer do the script and the mm. voiceover do it, and then they made the animation to suit so thing. what was the story? Okay, what was the story? Yeah, the story talks about, yes, it was shit to gold, yes. Okay, right, yeah. Oh, we're never going to get the story by looks of it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm it's not. Pulling you get a lot of sleep <laughs> last night, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right, so therefore, what we got... We've got a question. We've got a question over here. We've got a... No, uh, and, a and we've got there's a mic running. There's only D on, I don't care. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Do yeah, I'm stand up. Oh, you are standing yeah. up. Sorry. <laughs> I might be slightly taller than you. Um, just as a follow on with, for the doodle um, video, what, which one is more effective because the doodle keeps me engaged versus a person sitting there? So a doodle will beat 
this guy, he'll beat me, he'll beat Dave, and Doodle will beat most of us except Robin Williams. If you're Robin Williams, when people say to me, how long is a website video? Sorry, I mean, you're going to have your 20 cents in a minute, but it is my show. Um, so He thinks it's his yeah, show. And you're, getting, and you're getting too much kudos as it is. You know? um, so the thing is, is that uh, if it, uh, people say, well, how long should a video be for the homepage or website? Now, all being sensible, two to four minutes probably, right? But if it's Robin Williams, it can be an hour. If it's Jim Carrey, it can be an hour, okay? If it's, uh, you know, if it's Kevin Rudd, maybe 60 seconds. So therefore, in your instance, um, the Doodle video will win just about every time against a normal person. But if you have an engaging presenter, then they might get up there near a Doodle video. But I would suggest to everyone in the room to consider the Doodle fast animation thing, particularly when it's sitting in our Rolodex, but not if you're a five-star spa. You see, we had two girls that came into this thing on one occasion. They were suffering from massive dickheaditis. And uh, what had happened is I showed the doodle video for plumbers and electricians. And stuff. They had a five-star spa in Balmain at Birkenhead Point in Sydney. Guess what? They went back. They didn't enjoy the program, so they were dickheads because they, they just pinched a little bit here and thought they'd cherry pick and go back and do it themselves. They didn't have to join. They thought they were too smart for their own good. So they went back and they put the doodle video on the Palazzo Versace sort of website that they had back in Sydney. Like, dun, dun, you know, wrong, you know, moron, moron. And then they came back to one of these things and they stood up and said, I just want to say the doodle video didn't seem to work for me. I said, what's your business? And they get, we brought up on the screen, here it is, Palazzo Versace, five-star spa, like we're talking like a million dollars just to walk through the door, and they got an animation video. And I just said, that's it. look, just drive to Bunnings and buy some rope, all right? Because that's... <laughs> Can I just share one more thing about the animation? When, when we first decided we were going to have a video, our... Um you know, our aspirations to what we wanted to do were extreme. We were going to have drone, drones flying around at sunset and harvesting machines running across the farm. And it very quickly became a twenty or $25,000 production value. Um, we scratched that, we did the doodle, and we put that up. It cost, I think we paid 300 for the voiceover and 300 for the art. And yeah, we had our, we were up and running and online advertising it within Bang. a week. Bang. Yeah, well done. Thank and thanks. I don't know why you didn't tell that to us like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> when, when we asked. <laughs> um, uh, Dion, just uh, to follow up on what JD said, if in doubt, test. Right? If you've got any doubt about whether or not the doodle's going to work or whether a talking head or whether your drones or anything like that, try to get it done as cheaply as possible and test. And then once you've worked out what's working more effectively, if you need to tip a bit more coin into to, to get a higher spec version done, then do that. Uh, now, this particular, before we get to that, uh, this particular, uh, this particular uh, guy here, um, we don't know what penitentiary he's from, but uh, I've got to play this, I've got to play this for you. I've got to play this, this is Facebook Live, I hope to God he's not watching this, but anyway, so therefore, if you are, wake up to yourself. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll play that, let's go. Be nice with the lights there out. There are hundreds of plumbing companies servicing the Brisbane area. For the customer, this can be a daunting experience. Trying to find a competent trader that you can trust can seem impossible. Hello, I'm Phil Gearland from Pathfinder Plumbing and Gas, and I'm here to let you know why you should use our company for all your plumbing needs. We are professional. <laughs> Pathfinder Plumbing and Gas is a family-run business that is a member of the Master Plumbers of Queensland Association. I personally have over 25 years of experience within the industry. <laughs> you are protected. You can be assured that all our staff are fully licensed and insured. We ensure that we are covered. I think so it's enough. Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah. I think it's enough. So therefore, when you look at that, like that's you, the only word could describe that is scary. Okay, so oh. you don't want to do that. Yeah. So uh, he's. Uh, but the funny part about it, we make jokes for he's now got his own Tonight Show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be funny? Hello, welcome. You know, <laughs> like I've mentioned. Oh. Um, okay. So the other. So no, no, we just dug that out of somewhere. I mean, we wouldn't let him join the brain. and go. Just, go. just, just imagine him actually being in your house. Yeah. Exactly. That's like, <laughs> yeah. But I like the part about where he says, you're probably finding problems about this, that, whatever he does, plumbing, whatever. And then about 10 minutes into it, hi, my name's Jim, or whatever it is. <laughs> Why do you introduce yourself in the beginning? Imagine if you walked into your home and just started doing stuff, and then like half an hour later, my name's Jim, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but, and I, can you imagine him on one of those dating shows and someone won him? No. <laughs> 
Yeah. Actually, I pull the curtain across. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so there's I think, Gary, you had a question, mate. Yeah. Uh, we might get a microphone to you in a day or two. Oh, probably the guy had his hand up, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> so, John, would a doodle video be good for a consultant like myself? For an insultant like yourself? Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, uh, you mean you doing the video? No, no, the doodle video. Um, oh, doodle. Uh, let me see. So, therefore, just explain to everyone the real estate game that around what you do. So, yeah. then we can. So, we coach and train real estate agents Australia wide and also business brokers. Yeah, you see what, see what happened there? <laughs> see what happened to, so the other person who gave a, like a brief description of what they do was him. And so there he gives you a round of applause. Everyone else is going, what the fuck? I don't know. What <laughs> so is there any more to your business, Darren? Or is that what you're doing? <laughs> so could you so be like expand that? Maybe give another word, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so we, um, <laughs> we help real estate agents and business brokers uh, learn to list and sell better, negotiate, um, you know, all the soft skills that they require to, to sell real estate and sell businesses. Right. So therefore, uh, we were talking about, oh, Jake, so we were talking about this last night mm. and uh, where Darren's business at the moment is heading towards real estate agents who generally speaking don't have the sort of budget that the principal would have. So uh, he's got a wide audience, but a lot of agents, unfortunately, because they're working on commission, they're waiting for the next commission check in, they should jump onto that straight away and, and get trained on how to be better agents, but they don't historically have a lot of money. So we were talking last night of swapping the focus across to principals, the guy that owns the LJ Hooker place, because he's gonna have more budget, you know? Um, and so if you were going to do a doodle video, would you be considering doing it for the new focus of the principals or for the agents? I probably have one on both pages. We'd have an agent page and, and a principal page. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think it could work, but as long as it's humorous. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, and, and I'm not saying this from a sexist point of view. It's a blokey industry. That doesn't mean to say there's all blokes in it, but even the ladies who are in the industry tend to be extroverted, a bit of fun, uh, because it's real estate, you know, that you're selling people's dreams. And so I think in that industry, you'd probably find that if it had a degree of humor to it, like quick wit, yeah. it'd have a chance of working. Yeah. Okay. If you were the Palazzo Versace, I'd say no, that's not going to work. And what I thought we might do is bring up the fuelforsales.com.au website and just show uh, Rockstar, that's fuelyoursales.com.au and we'll just show how it works on there. So this is a fuel discount program that we sell to um, uh, retailers, mainly to butchers and delicatessens and coffee shops and places like that. Uh, Dave was asking for his news agencies, does it, do I think it might work? And it does have a chance, but he doesn't have the margin that a coffee shop has. So if a coffee shop sells you a coffee for $4.50, they've made that for probably 40 cents. You've got lots of margin. With a news agency, you've got tight margins. And how this fuel discount uh, program works, it's, but keep in mind I came from Woolworths, so I know a little bit about uh, fuel discounts. It is a juggernaut. And I haven't made as much money out of it as I should have because typical entrepreneur, butterfly flew by and I got distracted by something else, you know. Um, but it is a ripper idea. And what it is, is a 10% discount turned into like rocket fuel, excuse the pun. Uh, so what it is, is that uh, Woolworths and Coles have made a lot of money out of their four cents a litre, but they're handcuffed now, but they, they can only do four cents a litre because they got caught, you know, putting up the petrol prices of the Bowser to, you know, offset the discount. And so the ACCC now said you can only ever, 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 ever give away four cents a litre. Remember Woolworths a few years ago, they would say, well, you get 10 or 20 cents a litre if you bought this weekend, right? Well, this is to combat them for the little guys to take on Woolworths and do that. So what it is, is that for every $50 you spend, let's say in a coffee shop, um, first of all, you register, you get a little uh, membership card, which is barcoded. And uh, for every $50 you spend in the, in the cafe or butcher shop, you get 10 cents a litre off your fuel. 10 cents a litre for every $50. Like it's insane. It, like it kills Woolworths. So if you spend $100, you get 20 cents a litre. You spend 150 you get 30 cents a litre off your fuel. You spend 500 you get a dollar a litre off your fuel. So for every $50, you get 10 cents a litre of fuel, up to 50 litres. So therefore you go and get your petrol from any petrol station you like, you come back into the butcher, you present your little card, he zaps it on the iPad where we've got a special app, it comes up, you know, John Dwyer, and he goes, oh, okay, uh, you've got a petrol receipt, and here it is, up to 50 litres, so even if my petrol receipt's 55 litres, I only get 50, right? But that's, you no, know, Woolworths only lose 34 litres. They've got 80, you can claim, but we all draw, drive matchbox cars these days, so you, don't, you only lose 34 litres. So he goes, 50 litres, okay, let's have a look at your account. You've got $102 that you spent with my butcher shop over the last fortnight. Do you want to eat it all up? I go, yep. He goes, well, that's two lots of $50 in the $102. So that's two lots of 10 cents. We'll give you 20 cents a litre 
and multiplied by 50 litres is $10. $10 is a percentage of the 100? 10%. 10%. That's all it is, a 10% discount. So even at $50, and you bring your receipt back in from any petrol station, you don't have to go any particular, you bring it in from any petrol station, you come back in, I'm stalling to wait for that website to come up, go, I don't know how much longer I can take this story. <laughs> you know? Can't get it up for some reason, I've heard that before. So, um, <laughs> so therefore, uh, can't we go live? Can't we just go on a website? Oh, God, okay. How much do we pay for this shit all? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, should be, yeah. Uh, so anyway, what would happen is if you spent $50 um, and you get 10 cents a litre up to 50 litres, 50 litres multiplied by 10 cents is $5. So for every $50, you get $5. It's just a 10% discount. But who thinks 10 cents a litre off the fuel for every $50 sounds a hell of a lot better than 10% discount? Of course it does. Um, and when we've run it for this guy over here, um, this is why he was kind enough to give us a testimony, if I can just grab that microphone, man. This guy here, we sent out the video box to butchers because um, it says the most powerful thing in, you know, in the world. When you open up, this is why he says what he says. Well, that's just an unbelievable part of this program. Our turnover has gone from three million to well over four million in, uh, in the last 12 months. Our turnover has gone up that much because of the fuel for less program. People just keep coming back. The average sale per customer has gone up through the roof. Uh, eight to ten dollars per customer using the fuel for less. Okay, so that goes on for a couple of minutes, and uh, we just send that out to a whole bunch of cafes and delicatessens and this, that, and the other. This video book is dynamite. Okay, and um, and so therefore we will spend twenty dollars per video book. We'll send out a hundred of them. We'll get fifteen calls. So a hundred times twenty dollars is two grand. We'll get fifteen calls, and we'll turn two thirds of those into a job. Now they people pay for this about a couple hundred dollars per week for the license because they get all the membership cards, they get SMS programs going out reminding people about their balance for their petrol. It's all done for them. So two hundred dollars multiplied by uh, by fifty odd weeks. So they're paying me ten grand a year for licensing this program. Uh, but guess what? He went from three to four point two million. And I think I've told you the story before. I hate him because he uh, spends six months a year now in the Whit Sundays on a yacht that he reckons I paid for. So, um, yeah, so that that is, uh, and again, does that not demonstrate to you once again the difference between a price discount and a value add? All that is is a 10% discount but turned into a Happy Meal toy. Simple as that. You know? uh, any more questions about videos before we move on? Anybody? Um, okay, no more questions? Good. What I thought we'd do then is one more website before we wrap up the day. And Gail's got, is Gail here or she, but it's anybody here that is in the events industry? No, it says surely, okay, yeah. Uh, just check up with there. Through the it's door. It's sort of, um, it's a unique environment, isn't it? Um, it is. It's an event, um, it's, it's an event, but without any event people. That's, yeah, it's well, a, it's a seminar without, you know, seminar. Good, it's, it's seminar speakers, thank yeah. you, right. Well, what we'll do is we anyway, comedian. Um, who was I going to, Julie, you had that bit of paper with the businesses on there that we thought would be good for hot seats. Do you know where that went or? Sorry, Gail's got them, of course you would. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, five nuns walk into a brothel. Um, yeah. Sorry? Oh, okay. the interwebs. The interwebs. Gail, the interwebs having a few hiccups. Okay. Right here. Okay. I can't, so, I can't uh, pull up my face page. Yeah. Um, give me one second. Give me one second. Do you want me to keep entertaining them while you think? Dave, let's do it. Okay. You want to pop up here? Yeah. Okay. Um, the reason I picked Dave is because he's as sarcastic as I am. So therefore, you know, there's a good chance that we'll just basically bag each other out. Yeah. Good. Okay. Right. So there, Dave. If we can bring up Dave's website, and it is. Can we give Dave a microphone? Um, yep. Here you oh. go, Dave. Here, have this one. Whatever you want, which, whichever you want. Yeah, whatever you think it would be more powerful. Yeah, for, for you. Whatever is more beneficial for you, mate. Yeah. All right. So I've got a second um, uh, thing that I'm involved in, and my wife and I have a foundation. Uh, the reason being that my wife is actually blind, and our three kids have all inherited her condition. So one of my other reasons to be in JD's program is to create a lot more traffic and content for that so yeah if you're open to it i'd like to do the Absolutely. session on that site it's uh hey, can i just say this i've only known dave for a few weeks but i take my head off to him because uh for a guy who has a lot on his shoulders because of what's happening with his family um uh, he's just an incredible up incredibly upbeat guy uh which given the you know the weight on his shoulders is just incredible and uh yeah just talking to him last night about you know what he's doing in his other work uh, capacity and then has to do at home 
uh, you know, when we think we've got a sore throat, we've got nothing. We've got nothing. And, uh, you know, I take my hat off to him. So well done. And I said to Dave, look, uh, you, you know, just tell us how we can help you with the other foundation. And so let's just go through it. Okay, good. Yeah, so there's a bit of a medical story and um, our, there's a genetic team that have worked on a treatment for the kids and there's all this stuff happening and the, the, the reason for this is, you know, we need like two million bucks or five million bucks to finish this treatment, which is um, going to have a huge impact on lots and lots of people around the world, not just people with vision disorders, but, you know, it's a, it's a whole treatment that will come from the formative work that these guys are doing. So the objective here is to um, try and get some, some cash. And Dave, could you just uh, explain that you were lucky enough, well, not lucky enough, you worked hard for it, to get a story on one of the current affairs shows, but they promised at the end of the, um, the, the, the segment that they would help Dave, because there is potentially a cure. And you can imagine from in the position where Dave's a dad and a husband, he wants to get that cure as quickly as possible, but it's millions of dollars. And so he's, you know, set up the foundation to hopefully raise a lot of money. Um, but the current affairs show didn't do the right thing. They got the story, and, and it's a wonderful, wonderful story, but they didn't put the URL up at the end of the story to donate money. So unfortunately, yeah. yeah. And they, they kept all the traffic within the seven network. And I actually, actually left a job. I was earning, you know, obscene commission at one point, and I left the job to focus on the, the foundation. And then, you know, we didn't get the, we didn't get the traffic so yeah, we, we have to create our own traffic and that's something else that JD is going to do. Oh, and he said he'd donate us the first million. So cheers for JD. <laughs> Good. Petty cash, petty cash. Okay, so therefore, um, let's just have a look at the website. Um, now, Dave, can I just ask you the functionality of this web, not the functionality as in, you know, going through the pages and stuff, but what is the function of the website for you to, in terms of raising money? What's its role? It's to create an emotional response in people to make them realise, well, you know, what if this was me? And th there is another strategy that we're going to deploy down the track that means new content and stuff. And, you know, we're a long way from getting that ready. So this is nowhere near where it needs to be. Okay. Um, and, Emil, I want you, if you don't mind, to be involved in this too. And, uh, and uh, first of all, um, um, Dave was, gave me just pictures on his phone. Oh, I think it might have been your oldest little boy. Um, and he's up close to the TV because of his sight being impaired. Um, is he your oldest? Is he the oldest? Yeah, I've got a 17-year-old daughter and my boys are 14 and 12. And 12. And the, the, I think it might have been the 14-year-old boy who was very close to the TV because of his vision uh, problem. Is that right? Yep. yep. Um, and a, just a, a gut-wrenching photo. Just an incredible image of... of, of um, uh, well, you know, love from his father, but I mean, you just couldn't help but look at this and say, we've got to fix this, this has got to be fixed. And that's the image that should be there, not that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so therefore this image here, uh, in my opinion, is what you would see at Specsavers or just about any glass, you know, sort of uh, optometrist. Um, and uh, Dave has such a compelling story. It's a tragic, tragic story, but a compelling story um, that I think all of us, as we are sitting here listening to Dave today, would know that if there was something on TV that drove you to this website, you'd put your hand in your pocket. You just would. Um, but not if it looks like that. Not that it looks like that. I'm not saying you still wouldn't. I'm just saying that this doesn't have as most, much emotional pull. So can I ask you, when you watched that story on the TV show this morning that I showed, um, um, it's a good news story. It has a happy ending. Um, it, who in the room got emotionally involved in that story? All of us. That's why I did what it did, that show. Uh, it was the best time of my life. You said to me, what was the time in your life from a career point of view did you like the best? It was that six or eight month period. We'd sold the business, which was my footy card business and bingos and what have you. We got out of jail because we'd lost a lot of money before that and I had to pay back to the guy upstairs that gave us a break. And that break was we got the rugby league licence, right? And that got me home. And so I was determined to do this thing that would you know, be a, a, a feel-good TV show. And as I said, I didn't do it for the money. You heard what I spent on each show. I lost every, every show. But you know what? If you said to me, you know, what would you like to do again? I'd say that. And every one of the other six people, one of them has passed away. But the other four people who are involved in that just keep on saying it because I'm the leader of the pack. So I was, when are we going to do it again? When are we going to do it again? When are we going to do it again? And one of the ladies that did it with me is a wonderful, wonderful lady and dear friend. Her name is Chris. She runs uh, Father Chris Riley's Youth Off the Streets. So anybody heard of Father Chris Riley's Youth Off the Streets program? Yeah. So she's just a wonderful, giving lady. 
And um, and she keeps on saying to me, Chris and Amy, she goes, when are we going to do that again? I said, oh, you know, when, when the time's right. Now, in this instance here, I believe what Dave needs to do is to take the same demeanour, the same persona of that TV show that you saw this morning and put into this, okay? And I can... I can't guarantee anything, but I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm close to guaranteeing that if you did that, then you'll have a whole lot of money th thrown at you. Sure. All sorts of decisions. We, we do have a video in the frames below that has got... Can we watch yeah. one of those and then I can critique that because I've seen one of the videos and I'll, I don't know whether it's this one, Dave, but we'll play it. Okay, is that right? Yeah. If we can kill the lights, if there's anyone... Hello, in the... my name's Matthew. Gail, can do we you know kill the lights? Is? Good, we've got one brown. of our guests now killing the lights, great. My doctor said that I have to learn Braille because I'm going to be blind one day. It's much harder than learning to read. I don't want to go blind. It's not just me, it's my sister Kathleen and my brother Samuel. When I grow up, I want to be able to drive a car. I just want to keep on riding my motorbike and playing rugby. Mummy said that the doctors are nearly ready to fix our eyes. If we had $2 million, we could save my sight, my sister and my brother and other people too. Hold it together and handle this. Don't be scared. I'm going to just clean it first. Lots of people have supported us so far and the doctors are well underway. We need more money so they can finish what they started. Will you please help us? Thank you so much. That is incredible. Mm. Yeah, that is knockout. Well done, well done. And the reason I was anxious to see that, Dave showed me a video uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago when he signed up. Um, and it wasn't that one, Dave. It was the one where, um, uh, like, that is incredible. That is absolutely knockout. I cannot find anything wrong with that. Um, was that one that was produced at the same time? or I actually made that myself using um, some captures from Channel 7 and we cut up the voice. He recorded the voiceover at home in front of the curtain and... Yeah, that is knockout. That deserves another round. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if that got viral on uh, YouTube, um, can you imagine, or Facebook, can you imagine what might happen? Yeah, so what we mm. need to do at the end of that, though, is have a more stronger call to action with your little boy saying, please, could you help me? Well, that's wonderful. But there needs to be a full screen at the end of that that actually you know, really tugs at your heartstrings and gets you to just go to the website and donate money. Uh, where has that been seen other than the website? Um, we've had that marketed at a few events. Okay. Um, we tried to get it played at a rugby match when he ran the ball out for the Waratahs. We've had a, f a few people get... Um, they don't want that at their event because it's a bit, it's a bit emotive. It sort of depresses the mood. I mean, look how, look at them all, a bunch of sorry asses. What's happening to me? <laughs> yeah, well, you should be congratulated for having the uh, demeanour that you have, because someone, of course, in, in your situation, could easily crawl up in the corner in the fetal position, couldn't they? They could easily yeah. do that. I have, I have a time. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I'm sure you have. But now, well done to you, mate. Um, so therefore, that doesn't need to be. Uh, enhanced at all uh, because it's just so powerful um, there might be a snippet here or there that you might shorten up sort of thing but really it's just brilliant you've done a fantastic job but the call to action at the end of it needs to be stronger okay yeah sure yeah well, that's that's why we've got it on Vimeo because we actually don't have we haven't got the right hooks in place on the other platforms to bring the traffic back. So they're all the things that we need to yeah. get right. You know, if this went viral and we didn't have we didn't pick up the traffic again, it'd yeah yeah that might be our one chance. Yeah, um, couple of yeah couple right. of ideas that I might just throw you away. Um, a lot of people want to donate. They want to do good things in the world, right? You know, we've got prime example here, right? You, you, we want to help people, right? We're, everyone in this room seems like we're doing all right. 
one thing that sometimes holds people back is, especially if you're donating to another country, well, how much, how much of the cash actually goes to the, to, the poor, to the poor kids or whatever, and how much just gets gobbled up in admin fees? And if there's some little message at the end that says, you know, every cent goes to um, uh, what, however you phrase it, mm-hmm. but you provide reassurance that, you know, it's, what, it's not, it's 100% of what people give actually helps the kids. And, and not 12%, which it is in some cases. Yeah, sure. I think that'd be really good. And one other thing, I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm being callous because this is, this is serious stuff. It's not just, a, mm. it's not just bashing a cat. Um, would be, there are blind people in Australia. Right? That's, that's not new. I think what makes your situation unique is that it's a whole family. And I think if, we, if, if that angle gets pushed just a little bit more and... It was just an idea floating through my head while I was watching it. If your wife started off saying, you know, I found out I was going blind and I thought I'd be able to deal with that. But mm. when they told me it's the whole family, then yeah. it becomes a lot more, geez, that's... Yeah. yeah. Well, we do, we do have other footage that has got uh, my wife in it. And my, and my wife is actually a world champion triathlete. She's won, you know, I've, she's won the triathlon in Rotterdam a couple of years back. And um, so, yeah, she is, should be part of the thing but the other thing is we've really tried to keep this to the 90 second yeah. range yeah yeah i i don't think people are going to switch it off though no. once you get into it i don't think you need to worry about any sort of 30 second 60 second 90 second rules okay and starting off with the wife and then her explaining that it's you know i've passed it on to the children or whatever because yeah. it's point. a Good genetic point. condition mm. yeah. that gets people i think yeah. yeah and and the fact is that this can actually be stopped there's a lot of a lot of people whose um, disabilities can't be cured mm. and, you know, there's one that can. Yeah. You know, to, to give you an idea of what's happened here, Frank Lowy has a son who's blind and he donates a million dollars a year to a research group. That group has spent $60 million to try to find the genetic disorder underlying their condition. We found ours after spending 90 grand. Um, we've actually got, this is a home run. And we need five million. There was a group in Singapore that got ninety million dollars to do statistical analysis analysis on genomic data, and there's no outcome. There's no treatment. There's no although it's scientifically great, it's not going to have an impact to a person. Whereas our our doc wants five mil. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, and someone was saying it might have been you and me. I'm not sure when we're discussing this, but some it may have been when we're discussing it after that night that Dave signed up. If it was a mill or two, it would sound very achievable that you mm. just, or not a tel- telethon, but we'd all go, oh, well, surely we can do something there. You can have a few fundraising events. And that. But the five mill is a scary number, isn't it? I think it would always you. It is tricky but, because yeah. uh, a lot of people who donate, they're trying to, they're often business people who are successful, and that means that they're thinking about numbers in a different sort of a way. They think, well, what do I get for my five mil? Mm. Yeah. And mm. so if it's one person versus... 50 or 100 or if it were donated somewhere else where treatment's a lot cheaper we want to try to make sure that people it's just like taking people's eyes off the price you want to take their eyes off the the equation you want you want to get them away from thinking in just sort of black and white numbers and thinking about that so the the emotive component and the way you've done that i think it's really really good because it does get people here and makes them start thinking like these are real people it was um stalin apparently who said uh one death is a tragedy, a million deaths is a statistic. So you want to make sure that you make it, you continue to make it as personal as possible. Otherwise, you're just sort of like, oh, yeah. Mm. Um, how many people died in the plane crash? Oh, yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, who thinks that perhaps a, an idea, and I was going to sketch up because you've done such a great job. It's silly to waste time on doing that. Um, but before I throw the idea just out to everyone here to see if the, what they think about it, can we just have a look at the, um, Rockstar, in a moment, can we just have a look at the rest of the homepage to see what's there? It's just a little bit more go, I think. Okay, so we go up the top. We just go down. Oaks Trust is uh, growing up mid Oaks Foundation. Uh, yep, okie dokie, good. And then there's that. Okay, and keep coming. Uh, okie dokie, and that's Beth, your wife, isn't it? Yep. Okay. Surprising right. as it is. And we'll just yeah, you like yeah. I'll tell you what, you're punching above your weight. Yeah. She's she's blind yeah. though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, ex- that explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so therefore, um, so therefore, um, this here you might say is in the most appropriate position because it's after the storytelling and it's at the very end of it. 
I would suggest we might like to bring that a little bit up the top as well. Mm -hmm. So it can still be there, of course. So we can just scroll to the top again, if you don't mind. Um, Roxon, yeah, okay, okay. So therefore, who thinks that a major, major part of that area above the fold, and I know that most people are looking at things on smartphones now, but for the 20 or 30% who are still looking at a desktop, that's the bottom of the computer screen. So this is pretty valuable real estate, and it's been wasted, I think, with that graphic at the moment. So what I'd like to see there is probably Beth and maybe the kids, um, and it would have something that would be quite in your face, the headline would be, you know, um, Beth is, is blind and the children unfortunately look like that's, you know, genetically it's been passed on. Uh, we can put it, uh, we, we, we can cure this. All we need is money. That's all we need. And, um, our medical team don't want to share that because they feel it's breaching privacy, but there are numerous other families that have been found. It is at the moment, it's actually, you actually need to do the genomic sequencing. So it's a, it's not an easy but test just now. Yep, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You, well, can, can you, can, be said. Yeah. you can make mention that, it's, that it can help uh, other Australian children as well. Your button there says donate now. Uh, what's your eldest son's name? Uh, Samuel in the middle. That's Samuel. the youngest. That's the youngest one there. Oh, the, the whoever is doing the voiceover, your button text, even that donate now. Uh, save Samuel's eyesight today. Yeah. But what I would like to do, given this whole wow factor thing that I talk about, is uh, I'm sorry, you did have a question? Yeah, did you? Yeah, if, um, so they're very much a cataract treatment. This is a retinal disorder. But um, something that we haven't quite finished yet is that the, the you see the Oaks Trust and the Oaks Foundation. The trust was something we had, a family trust, which turns out wasn't the right financial vehicle. So the foundation is going to have the proper tax classifications to give deductible gift recipients tax breaks and stuff like that. It's a, you know, so it's going to be a proper charity and that's not quite finished. So some of those organisations won't donate until we tick that box. But th thank you. But you gave it to Woolworths. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had Dick Smith wanted to give us 10,000. I actually had a one-on-one -on -one phone call with him. And when he realised that we were a, a, tr a family trust, not a proper foundation, he sent his donation directly to our medical team instead. Mm, those numbers are too scary for most people. I'd, I'd avoid that. What you want to, what you really want to highlight, this is. Right. You could, yeah, that would work. Um, the key thing that you really want to do is just try to get people, as I said before, moving away from the thinking about what do I get for this and and quantifying it too much. We don't. We want to keep the logic out of it. Question, um, and and you don't have to answer in terms of it's too uh, personal. Um, is there a, a sense of urgency? I mean, you know, there's a there's a time limit to when your children may be fully blind. So to ca capture this and get the cure in early is really important. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not getting a sense of an imperative. Like, yes, there's a condition, and yeah, that, a, it that is certainly something. getting it in early, getting getting the cure early. That is certainly an aspect because the, the, they've, their vision gets a little bit worse each month and there comes a point where there's nothing left to save. And yeah, unfortunately, that urgency isn't communicated quite as well there as it could be. But so I think that's so really, really yeah. important. The, the conditions are reversible. It can be stopped, but it can't be reversed. That's what they're telling us. Okay. Well, so Timmy, I think it's a really that's key message. Urge, it's not important. just the money and the potential for a cure. It's the yeah. urgency. So it's yeah. not just a call to action to donate. We've got to do it fast. Exactly. Yeah. Dion? Save my eyesight. You, you can sit down, JD. <laughs> <laughs> just, just one of the things in, in crowdfunding, um, 
So I've gone to your web page is um, the $50, like a $50 button. So there's mm-hmm. ways that you can use the website and you have those buttons because then they don't have to think about how much. Sure. So it's just something to think about. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and when you look at a lot of the other um, not-for-profit associations that have crowdfunding in a sense, accepting donations through their site, they all have $50 because mm-hmm. think of, people think about, I can give $50. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we actually did have that and a, a person who I'm associated with said, oh, I'll host your site, I'll host your site for free. And he moved it across and killed it. <laughs> so we lost the whole Joomla site and we had to rebuild at short notice the WordPress site and that's, that's the Band-Aid. Yeah. Right, okay. Do you have, do you have a GoFundMe campaign as well? Uh, we, we tried that. We actually had another person set up a GoFundMe campaign for us and um, without our knowledge and there was actually a lot of... Um, a lot of the messaging was wrong. They actually had stuff in there that wasn't right. So it's not a platform we've really looked at. What what we really want to do and the, the the model that we're trying to build for this is to send Braille letters to um, high net worth individuals. And the only way they can read the Braille letter is go to the tiny URL that's at the bottom. And that would then bring them to a landing page. It'd be one for Ellen and, you know, one for Tom Cruise and one for Prince, whoever. And, um, have a personalised message, the video, and a, a donate. So that's that's what I'm trying to get to. But there's actually a lot of technical stuff that we have to get right. I, I like to do that. I don't quite understand that. So therefore, where the celebrity names come in? How does that work? Well, we just want to we just want to print out a braille letter, and it yep. actually gets sent to Ellen's PR office and Ellen's yep. pub, her publicist okay. and a network and. Yep. That's a video book equivalent, isn't it? That's the kind of yeah. thing that gets past the gatekeeper mm-hmm. because, you know, oh, you threw, you threw a Braille letter in the bin. Yeah. What the hell are you thinking? Yeah. That's yeah, sort okay. of like the same. Okay. Yeah. And there was an example a few years ago where a student in the US sent a Braille letter to President Obama. And, you know, within a couple of weeks, Air Force One was off mm-hmm. they went. And he actually went to the primary school where the kid was to meet him. And that's what sort of, yeah, that's well, something that you, if you can activate a person like that, yeah, but um, that's so that's where we've got where we got the idea. That's where we've borrowed that from, and we want to use that as our campaign. But I'm I'm not sure if that's practical or feasible. Well, uh, <laughs> no, uh, the current president. Yeah, um, but look, the thing, <laughs> yeah, the thing is, is that um, the thing is, is that you know, getting a fifty thousand or hundred thousand or half a million donation from a big businessman is possibly going to be a lot easier than getting lots of $50. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's yeah. what we've, and we've had this trust has now been out there for three years. My older kids are really averse to having been associated with this content now. And mm-hmm. they've got some other dynamics starting to creep in. And yeah, yeah, of course. Um, this here though is not uh, doing the job, is it? I mean, those uh, Macca's menu board, let's call them, I do from time to time on a website, I don't think there's the amount of emotion that needs to be involved in those words, mm-hmm. okay, because it's just basically, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's Telegram, and it's got to be far more emotionally written than that. What I've just got over here for the sake of it, um, Dave, and uh, there's another couple of ideas I want to do, so I won't spend much time on the website, but let's just say if this was your wife and the kids, and, and I understand with the kids being sensitive to that as they get older, of course, that we all understand that. We know what happens when our kids hit 15 or 16. They don't want to be anywhere near us, you know. But if it was to say that your wife was giving a quote, I haven't got that in crows, but let's just say for argument's sake, this is in crows. And it says, you know, myself, and my children, or what are the right English is for them, my children, myself, uh, unfortunately are suffering from this uh, illness. And, uh, and, uh, and so therefore, uh, look, the thing is, is that there is a cure. Um, uh, all we need, the only thing we need is funding. Now, that would just break your heart. If you looked at that, it had to break everyone's heart. There's a, there's a potential cure. And I know you've got to be careful with the language, a potential cure, but all we need is the funding. Mm. And so what we're saying is that we just need money. That's all we need. Uh, and then so uh, you would have a bit of copy there. Of course, I haven't drawn it to scale. And there'd be a headline here above a video, and that video there would be es- essentially what you've got there, which is not in the prime real estate area. It should be considerably up. In fact, that video should be probably above the, uh, the fold. Um, and that video just needs to be tricked up a bit. I think Emil's got a wonderful uh, suggestion there where um, Beth would be in that, you know, which is great. Um, and then we can talk about what would go more there. But what I was going to say is um, 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 <clears throat> I got asked when I was doing the Greater Building Society if I would do a pro bono thing for, um, for prostate cancer. 
and uh, these guys came in and they were in the boardroom of the Greater Building Society and they said, listen, um, uh, we didn't know who did the Greater Building Society advertising. We contacted the general manager, a guy called John Arnold, and we're all millionaires. And we just asked him, is there any chance at all you could introduce us to the guy that does the greater advertising, the guy that got Seinfeld and all this sort of stuff. And so um, can we meet with you? And I said, yeah, sure. So they came along to the boardroom and we, um, I met with them. And these guys said, look, we're all millionaires, but we've all had prostate cancer. And our prognosis uh, was pretty scary. But we went to a doctor at Newcastle Hospital and he put us through this program and an operation and we're completely clean skin now. And what we want to do is because he saved our life is raise money for him to help other people with prostate cancer. But we also want to make men aware who never go to the doctor um, that if they're over 40 years of age, there's a one in eight chance that they'll get prostate cancer. So for God's sake, go and get uh, the blood test. And it's got a PSA test. Any men in the room that's my vintage, you've got to go through a bit of that? Yeah, so it's got a PSA test. And uh, if your PSA level, when they do the blood test is a certain level, then you've got to go then and do the finger job, okay? Because the men will not go for this because they think it's the finger you know where. And um, I said, oh, okay, right on. And uh, they said, you think you can help us? And this was in the boardroom of the Greater Building Society. I said, easy, that won't be a problem, okay? And uh, they said, well, what would you charge? I said, nothing, I'm not gonna charge anything, that'd be fine. And they said, well, what we want is more men to go to their GP, because if they do go to the GP, the government will then wake up to the fact that this is as serious in terms of its numbers as breast cancer is for women. And yet the government does a lot of funding for breast cancer, they do nothing for the men, you know? Uh, and I guess really, you know, if you look around the world at the moment, if anybody seen any men's groups? There isn't any. I mean, everything is women empowerment, but there's no men empowerment things at all. So therefore they were saying that that is an issue. Men will not go to the doctor and they're not encouraged to go to the doctor. So they will get this illness and, you know, they unfortunately, you know, a lot of them will die. And I said, well, uh, listen, I just want to ask you guys a question. I'll be back to you within 48 hours with the idea. So we'll meet here again in two days time because we don't really mess around with this stuff. Um, do you want wild or mild? And they said, what do you mean? I said, well, there's going to be two campaigns here. One of them will be mild and the other one is going to be wild. Do you want mild or wild? And they went, oh, we'll go for wild. I said, I'm glad you chose that because I don't do mild. Okay, so therefore, <laughs> there's only one way to get this and we've got to shake the tin, right? He goes, right. So we ran a campaign called the Little Prick Campaign. And what it was was that we told men, okay, that you've got to get a little prick. If Gail was here, I don't have any staff here at the moment, but uh, you want to play that? You want to play it? Okay, good. Uh, so therefore, uh, it's a little prick campaign. And what it was, was that we had um, uh, TV commercials. Uh, these guys were millionaires, so they just backed the TV ads. And the ads, I scripted, but they decided that they had a brother-in-law that could produce them. So when you look at them, you're going to cringe being a video guy because they're just awful production values, but I can't do much about it. They decided their brother-in-law could make them. Um, but they worked unbelievably. We put these campaigns on uh, throughout uh, regional Australia, and we had to stop it within two weeks because every GP was jammed with men going in to get a little prick. And how it worked is the guys came on TV, they were at the right age group, and they said, my wife told me to get a little prick. Now that's gonna get your attention, right? And then another guy would come on, he'd go off, go, my wife told me, if I didn't get a little prick by Friday, don't come home, you know? Uh, and then the other guy said something else. And then we had a female version of it where the females came on and said, I told my husband, if he doesn't get a little prick, then I will not, I'll leave him, you know? And uh, so, of course, you got your attention. Then it went on to show a vision of the guys going in to get a blood test, which was a little prick, okay? The needle, that was the whole idea of it. Uh, it melted the, G the GP system because it said, go and book an appointment with your GPs, right? So this is wild, not mild. Uh, and they were kind enough to give me a lovely certificate because they said that there was 1,560 men's lives were saved because when they went to the doctor, their PSA was at a certain level where they get it early, they're fixed. And it was quite an emotional, so yeah, well, thank you, yeah. Um, but anyway, so the thing is, is that um, the reason I bring that up is because uh, we know McDonald's Happy Meal Day works because it's all pushed into one big wow. It's not drip feed like this. Oh, can you put $50 in today and $50 in tomorrow? And, and you're working hard for that. It's a lot easier to build up McHappy Day uh, or the Legacy Day. Remember the Legacy badges and stuff like that? Red Nose, remember all of that? It is so much easier. And that's what I sort of did in a quasi sort of way with this campaign. We just melted the TV screens with it because these guys had money. We only had two complaints. That was cheeky. I'm not saying you do cheekiness here. This would be dreams can come true stuff, but that was cheeky because what, who's the audience? We're after men. They're going to put up with like sort of humor like that. Um, we had two complaints to the uh, Australian television tribunal 
and it was one, and they just missed both of them, thank goodness, because they saw how powerful the campaign was. But one lady complained that a five-year-old was running around the house going, Daddy's got a little prick, Daddy's got a little prick. So thankfully they how, just How do they it. know that was from the ad? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I think we're bringing it up, aren't we? Uh, here it is here. I made my husband get a little prick. I wasn't going to let my husband get away with it any longer. I booked him in for a little prick this week. I told my husband not to come home until he got a little prick. One in eight men over 50 will get prostate cancer. If detected early, the cure rate is high. Yes, a single prick at your local doctor's surgery is all that is needed to measure the PSA level. Guys, do it for your wife. Do it for your family. Get a little prick this week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, you get the gist of it, and as you would have looked at it from a video perspective, it's pretty low quality in terms of production values. I'm almost embarrassed, but you know what? I don't care. It saved 1,500 lives, you know. So, um, so the thing is, is that I would suggest, and Dave's would not be using humour like that, um, but I'm suggesting to cram everything in to a grand final, okay? Cram it all in and get the big noise for whatever it ends up being, whether it's Christmas Eve and it's the biggest Christmas gift in the world or whatever it may be, but I reckon there's a lot of merit to be given. And if you don't raise the amount of money that you wanted to, that's all right, you hold another one, okay? But cram it all into a big event. Because I said to you guys, oh, look, you know, instead of coming to this, what do we call this a super conference? We call it the media, uh, the social media super conference. If I'd not given it a name like that and come along to three days worth of all these speakers and all the wizardry that you've been here, and I just said, oh, do you want to get on the phone maybe for, you know, a, a, a webinar even for maybe 20 minutes a day for the next 16 days? I don't think you guys would have hung in there. So you came because it was squashed into one big event. Um, and what you would call that, you know, red nose, whatever it may be, I'm not sure, but I think you'd probably be able to have a better chance of building up a lot of media interest if it was one big date where we were aiming to raise a lot of money, you know. Mm. And of course, you know, the other... A countdown, yep, exactly. Well, yeah. I was going to say... Yep, yep, I was lovely. Yeah. I was going to ask, are there sort of projected dates when it will be too late for treatment? For, um, and each one will be slightly different. You could have little countdown timers on each one that are counting down. Yeah, by the no, no, we haven't, we haven't got a countdown. Okay. But um, because that yeah. nothing's going to make people realise how urgent it is, and having yeah, but we could like have that. an artificial counter on yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah and look, and I really do um, appreciate the ideas of the urgency factor because you know that's what we are all about in terms of direct response. Just got to be careful with the sensitivity issue here mm. too. Uh, so we've got to be. I can be flighty with all the other stuff that we do. Um, and with that one that you've just seen there, because it was men, I can get away with all sorts of cheekiness with mm -hmm. men. I mean, there was one lady asked me um, yesterday or the day before, would I uh, speak at a women's conference? I said, you don't want me speaking at a women's conference. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want me anywhere. You don't want me anywhere near them, right? Bulls China yeah, shops. Yeah, exactly. If it's, a hard, <laughs> if, it's, if it's a hardware industry, I'm your You're man. Your I'm your man. <laughs> You're um, going to lose half your audience. I was just going to say, what um, if if you think about that video of mine in a more of a distressed media format? What is it? Can we put a spin on that and play it in Dubbo and Tamworth and Townsville? Absolutely. That's, that's why I wanted to bring that up because uh, um, you know you've got that thing there, which is just incredible, um, and. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of nice people who are running the big media stations and so therefore it's not necessarily even that you have to go down the distressed path. It could well be that you would you know, strike a chord with these people and they would, they would give you some free airtime because they either put that on or they put on a promo for Home and Away. That's what they do, okay? Or they just put a station promo on to, you know, you know, basically tells you how good television advertising is. I mean, how many people listen to the radio? Well, not many of us, but who listens to the radio these days? But you hear a lot of the ads on the radio that says, you ought to advertise on the radio. That'd be like Woolworths saying to you whilst you're in the shop, you should shop at Woolworths. So I can never work that one out, you know? Um, the bingo stuff that I used to do for the newspapers, when we did the bingo for them, we would drop the bingo cards to every home in Sydney and to people who would have bought the paper and many, many people who didn't. Because we wanted new people to pick up the bingo card at the letterbox and go, the only way I can win the million dollars is, oh, I've got to buy the Sunday Telegraph. But when I stopped doing it, you know what they did? They dropped the bingo cards out of the paper. That means you're just preaching to the converted. <laughs> um, and and you know, the radio statement, mates of mine run hot tomato up here. 
and they run these ads on, um, you know, I don't, I don't know with you guys, know, but the guy that owns Hot Tomatoes, a good mate, his name's Hans Torv, okay? And Hans' um, sister was Anne Murdoch, or is her Anne Murdoch, so she married Rupert Murdoch. So there's a lot of money in the family and you know, all that sort of stuff. So he set up Hot Tomato Radio Station and we have every now and again what we call Save the World lunches because the, the, lunch does, the world does need saving from time to time and we have to have a long lunch to talk about fixing all the problems. And so after the 16th beer, um, he will be saying to me, look, you know, uh, you got any ideas for my radio station? I said, yes, got lots of ideas. Stop the bus advertising. Because I saw one of them this morning on the way in here, and it's got a picture of, you know, Charlie, uh, uh, Sil uh, Julie and, and, and Tom, the breakfast crew, and it's got hot tomato underneath it. That's it. Oh, and by the way, in about that much type, it said 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. Monday to Fridays. Um, if you get an invitation to anything, so on that bus it was an invitation to listen to the radio station, but if you get an invitation to a wedding or to something like this, or do you reckon the date and the time is a pretty big part of the invitation? Yeah. This was just three people in their breakfast show, and down here it said 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. But they just don't get it. And I said to him, I'll tell you how to double your station ratings you would put out a letterbox brochure with bingo's numbers on it and you would put them to everywhere on the gold coast that suits your audience because his audience are 25 through 54 that's the audience they're after okay so up here on the gold coast you've got cfm which is young people they've got 11 listeners these days right and then you've got gold fm affectionately called old fm okay uh and then you've got in the middle hot tomato which are people you know it's 20 35 through to sorry 25 through to 54 I said, you know where they live on the Gold Coast. So you put a, a lure, a bingo card to win X dollars, use one of the insurance, into their litter box, and they've got to listen to your radio station every morning to get the numbers to scratch out. And those numbers are come on at 8, 7.20, 8.20 at night, whatever it might be. And he said, you think that will work? I said, I did it for 2UW in Sydney, which is now 106.5, and they went from um, uh, six to 10 rating points in one survey. Every point's worth a million dollars. And all they did, they didn't change the radio network, they didn't change the personalities, they didn't change the music. All they did was a Happy Meal toy. We let a box drop to Sydney, one and a half million bingo cards, and said the only way you're going to win the money is to listen to 2W at 6.20, 7.20 and 8.20. So in, in Dave's instance, I'm thinking that, you know, what you might like to do is to build up a McHappy Day sort of date and Christmas Eve might be wonderful. Um, and we need to raise this money by Christmas Eve. So it doesn't necessarily have to be just the one day. Uh, because you won't be able to book enough TV ads just to do that. But it may well be that you say, okay, Christmas Eve, we would love nothing more than to be able to pr provide my family with a present that would raise this money. And you might find a whole bunch of those TV stations will give you those ads without charging. You know. Also, given that you're making millions of dollars, it's like people give that instead of like people spend a gift and put money in for the rubbish and things like that. Yep. Now they're giving it as a gift. Yep. You know, Sam's mm -hmm. side or Matthew's side or. Yep. <laughs> Be lovely, be lovely. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, uh, mate. Yeah. Okay. Are we, do we, we, we do we have any staff left here at all? No, we don't. <laughs> we only got the sound guy. Uh, you might hand over your microphone, Dave. You could actually be a runner for us, probably throughout the rest of the time we do this. Yeah. Perhaps giving something back to the people who are donating, like the art union give away a house or a prize or an opportunity for something like that, and if you, it was an insured price promotion or you got the builder to actually uh, pay pay for that. It's an opportunity to win, but they but they get something back and it's a... Uh, that is a great idea. A, great the, idea. The, the so idea you're saying is get someone to sponsor the $16,000 for the million dollar prize. Uh, okay, yeah, great idea. Now, you cannot hold a lottery, okay? So you're not allowed to hold a lottery, but what you can do is that people would pay X dollars for a widget, um, whether it's a, a red nose or whatever it might be. Uh, and with that comes a free ticket into the million dollar draw. So the government won't let you run a lottery against their lotteries. They're a bit thinking about that understandably, right? So therefore what you can do is you say, look, we're going to have a postcard, something silly. I mean, people are not worried about the red nose for God's sake, but it's something that you just would have a postcard of whatever, we'll bring up something. Um, but it's got to be your legacy badge or it's your red nose or something like that, but they get a free that's ticket into the million dollar draw. Yeah. But that's a great idea. Well done, yeah. Anybody else before we close up? Because, um, I, I, uh, yeah, sorry, just, just the microphone. Oh, sorry. What about sponsorship from um, optometrists, like an OPSM or a um, spec savers? Because spec savers at the moment, I think, have got an ad, um, which is all about what uh, losing. Yeah, how much would you sell your eyes for? Yeah, how much would you sell your eyes for? Or, yeah, I, mean, I thought of what we can, what sort of spin we could use to pick up that 
momentum that they've got. Yeah. 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 Or, or maybe, you know, yeah. for every sale, you know, donate to, you know, your charity, for example, you know, linking that people who are buying glasses or conscious of their eyes yes. um, and, and, yes. and optometrists, because you've got a, yeah, a group of people, you know, community that's customers that are, you know, worried about their eyes. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, like, um, and this is not cheesy at all. I'm being serious about this, but I wonder whether or not, even with the um, uh, video that may turn into a Facebook video, uh, touch wood viral or, or TV, I wonder whether some special effects might be, you know how like when we're looking at our cameras as a blurry vision and you go, hang on, how long is it going to last? But then the lens kicks in, you know, I'm not a photographer, so, you know, but I wonder whether or not that special effect at some stage throughout the communication would be, imagine if this is what you had all day. It wasn't yeah. just for your camera to kick in. We, we actually um, did some work with the Marriott Hotel chain in the US and they, they actually donated a bit to one of our events, but um, they came out with a whole series of uh, YouTube videos that were, it was basically black screen and, and, and just sound. And it was the sound of swimming and the sound of r running, the sound of cycling. Yeah. And then it would uh, sort of, uh, a line would come up and then it would be fo footage of Beth in the Chicago world champion para triathlon. Wow. Wow. And um, so they made, I think there was six 30 second things and they, um, paid they had a dollar per share or something like that and yeah we got a we got a nice check for twenty thousand us dollars to give to our um medical team wow wow well mate i think uh I, it, 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 on behalf of everybody um wish they the very best and uh and you know i think if as a community ourselves if there's anything we can do to um to assist i'm sure that everyone here would be willing to throw ideas onto the table yeah yeah okay. thanks everyone Good. Thanks, and, uh, from our point of view, um, I, I don't know who down the room, they, they have to do some paperwork, but you've just been upgraded to our masterclass program. Oh, mate. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okie dokie. Right, so therefore, um, uh, we're going to wrap up because it is, what is it now? It's uh, four o'clock and uh, it's Sunday and uh, who's busting for a beer? Pretty much everyone. Yeah, good. Okay. Now, before before we go, uh, before we go, is there any questions at all that, um, that we... Did we have any questions at all from anyone? Uh, okay, okay. Any uh, anybody have relationship problems? Good. I thought there would be one. Uh, <laughs> that was bad timing, wasn't it? Yeah, Andrew. Uh, we'll get a microphone too, mate. So probably sometime today. Oh, Julie. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, right. Julie's going to be very happy to get away from my sarcasm any minute now. Yeah. A member of your budget uh, class, <laughs> um, how do we access the Rolodex resources and in particular, like how do we know um, who to send our website inquiries yep. to to get that okay. redone? So uh, you've got access to the Rolodex thing by, by simply just getting into our members area and just bringing up the Rolodex, so therefore that's there. Do you know how to do that or you haven't done that just yet? I only found the two buttons with the two different okay. options. Well, that's no problem. Just, just talk to Jodie at our office. She'll walk you through it. That's easy. Or one of the girls. Um, but once you get in there, in terms of who you might like to choose, say, for example, there might be three or four website guys in there. If you just simply post them on Facebook, oh, JD, which of the four suppliers for Bloom, whatever it might be, Beverly State's website, would you recommend? Uh, because I then would get, you know, I know your business. I'll go, look, I think for your sort of thing, this. So think, for example, in Dave's instance, uh, the website that he it has to be really slick. That website that he's got here has to be really slick. I would not send him off to the Philippines. I would not suggest that he gets the $500 website from the Philippines. Because, you know, we do have a supplier in the Philippines that will build a website for you for $450. And they do a damn good job. They do a good job. But would it be as good as the one that you pay two and a half grand for here in Australia? Many would argue not. And it's like everything in life, you get what you pay for. But if you're a little startup business and you haven't got two and a half or three grand to put onto a website, then yeah, it's a great option for you. And it will still be pretty good. If I could bring one up, I'll show you how good it is. Uh, splendorinstone.com.au, splendorinstone.com.au. So I'll show you what you'll get for $450 and it's not bad. But if you were in uh, a David Jonesy sort of business, I'd say, you know what, I think we'd probably use a guy in Melbourne or a guy on the Gold Coast that this sort of so this is one that they did two weeks ago, and this is four hundred and fifty dollars for the entire website. Okay, and I keep scrolling down. I sketched up what the design would be, and of course that goes across to the Philippines, and they put that together. Uh, it's 
you notice that it's a David Jones, um, we have pop-ups and all sorts of things happening, but it's a David Jones sort of feel, so that's why it's executive colours. They're selling, they're selling stone walls for fireplaces and for uh, swimming pool, barbecue areas, and so therefore it's not unusual for someone to be spending $10,000 or something on that. Um, and this guy here, we've just thrown up a Facebook campaign last week, and we said, do you like that one or that one? It was a fireplace, and he got 51 leads in 24 hours and at $2 a lead. Do you reckon two dollars a lead for someone who sells ten thousand dollar product is pretty good? Yeah. So he can get a hundred leads and pay two hundred dollars, even if his close rate is one in a hundred. It'll be better than that. But let's say it was one in a hundred. So one in a hundred. That means two hundred dollars he's paid for that sale. If it's a ten thousand dollar sale, and he's got five in it, then bloody hell, you do it every day of the week. So I wanted to show you that because it's still uh, uh, what I believe is quite good. But if indeed you were a business that I thought, no, look, you need some TLC here locally, then I'd say, yeah, look, go to these guys. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's really the best way if you're in any of the programs, the, um, the, the best way and the quickest way to get, uh, if you're in the masterclass program, you can get a meal and I, of course, at any time and you can book in a call. But with the other academy program, if you still want the wisdom, then you just type into the Facebook page, look, can you help me out with this, that and the other? All I ask is that the questions are a little bit harder than the one I got not so long ago. It was a retailer who said, JD, where would I get a pull up banner from? And my answer to him was um, probably from a pull up banner printer, I, I would imagine. Um, and maybe Sinorama, someone like that. I'm just taking a wild guess. Uh, and I said, but do not go to Officeworks because those crappy little ones are just crappy, you know, because they're $60. But if you go to Sinorama, you get the pull-up banner like these things here, you know, they're about $160 a time. So, you know, knock yourself out and do that. Well, of course, where do you think he went? Officeworks and got the crappy little one. Three days later, same retailer. JD, could you tell me what to do? My pull-up banner blew away in the wind. It blew away in the wind outside my shop. What will I do? I said, run after it. <laughs> What, you're paying you're paying 500 bucks a month for that no no he's not he's in the two and a half grand program he's in the yeah he's in the master class program mate i think there might be some more important things you know um so and the other one classic that i get is that uh, jd we're opening up a seafood restaurant should the decor uh be warm colors like browns and reds and tans or cool colors like blue and green who, who wants to take a stab at the latter one yeah i think so like yeah so anyway that um and that's when i send back can you spell iq um, good guys, well thank you very much uh, for coming. Everyone got good value? Okay, I'm glad of that. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to thank Emil. Um, <laughs> no, no, I won't. I'd like to. I'd like to. No, do you want to say a few words, mate? I was saving that joke up here. Uh, thank you, everyone. I really enjoyed, uh, you know, being entertaining and, you know, getting a lot of questions and that sort of thing. And managing to fumble my way through most of the answers. Uh, any takeaways, um, think about your prospects. That's about it. That's been my big theme. And starts with I, implement. It's no good having all these ideas and working out, okay, now I'm thinking about my prospect. Now I know what I need to do. Okay, great. Oh, but I've watched The Secret. I'm going to sit on my couch and I'm going to think about $100 million <laughs> and it's just going to bloody materialize because, you know, I've earned it. I deserve it because I'm, you know, thinking about it. No, you have to take action. I've got to get him to do this gag. We're having a coffee down earlier, and I can't remember it, but it was funny. He said, uh, is it all right with you? And we ran out of time. We didn't do it. I've got to get you to do it. What did you say downstairs about the monkeys and the whole thing? What was it? The, um, oh, yes. Yeah. Come and see. Sometimes, you know, we talk and uh, I explain something, and then, and then during one of the breaks, someone says, oh, well, yeah, but that's just common sense. It's like, yeah, common sense. Okay. The world is full of dickheads, right? And they... They are among us. They're hard. They look like us. <laughs> apart, from, apart from the ones with, with spectacles, right? Sometimes you can kind of tell, right? But most of the time, you don't know. And you might be a dickhead. You, <laughs> might, you may have the condition. You need to see a trained professional. And there were two instances that I came across. Again, there was another. I don't know who does the signs on the sides of buses, but they are, they are the worst sufferers you come across. Because what it was was, do you need a granny flat on the side of a bus? Do you want a granny flat? Do you need a granny flat or something like that? And you're sitting there thinking, not really. But the company name wasn't there. Or maybe it was, but it was right down the bottom. How often can you see the bottom of a bus? You can hardly even read what's on the side of a bus if it's on the side, let alone, and, and if it's moving, and if it's a long URL in all caps, mm -hmm. but then, or maybe it's stopped. Oh, well, you're in traffic. Well, then it's all covered by cars, isn't it? So you can't see a bloody thing. So classic dickheaditis. And the other thing is, I don't know who did, who did uh, the dashboards in the latest Honda Odyssey because it's all digital. So you're driving along, 
And it used to be knobs, right? You can glance over, okay, click that, click that, click that. Now, now the aircon's now feels good. Now you're sort of like risking your life just to cool down. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a touch screen, so it's going to be stuffed in five years anyway. <laughs> Again, dickhead-itis, right? People not thinking about what consumers want and what is simple. And you're probably thinking, yeah, Emil, that's just common sense. But, but don't forget, like yesterday, we did a little bit of a test, and statistically, I could have filled a room with a bunch of nutless monkeys, <laughs> and they would have got a better result than you lot <laughs> when, it came to, when it came to the split test. <laughs> That, that was the part downstairs that I said you probably should stop at. Uh, oh, right. No, no, yes. I, said you probably I don't know where the line is until <laughs> it's in the rear view. <laughs> <laughs> no, he had me in stitches downstairs. I said, well, that's a bigger insult than I make. You know, yeah. So, look, thanks, guys. Anyway, so, um, true, yeah, if you're aboard, then we look forward to helping out and, uh, and having a bit of fun at the same time. And um, if I could just ask you to do me a favour, if you really did enjoy this and uh, you know the name of our thing, the Institute of Wow, if you don't mind, you might just put something on there that if you enjoyed it uh, in terms of Facebook. So it's just always nice because it's uh, social proof that these things are worthwhile. So if you get the chance and you know that this has not really, um, you know, this has not been a huge expense for you outside of what you know it took you to get here. So if you don't mind, if you think you got great value for not a lot of uh, huge investment, then it'd be lovely if you could just say something nice on Facebook for us. So the Institute of Wow. If you don't have anything nice to say. So you did. I, I saw it. Thank you very much. I saw that, Sydney. Yeah. Oh, we um, have an implementer. Yeah, an implementer. Yeah, that's right. Um, but look, but it, look, my mother taught me if you don't have anything nice to say, say nothing at all. So if you don't have anything nice to say, keep it yourself. Okay. Um, we try not to be on the scam files. Yeah. Right, well, guys. Thanks very much. Anyway, see you next time. Okay. Bye. -bye. Oh, Elvis music. That's good. Very appropriate. Very appropriate. I'm off.